Hey everyone, it's Jenny Black. Thank you for joining me for my online class. Today we're going to start a project and we're going to make some wall art or some frameable art. Um, if you don't want to do a frameable art project, then you're welcome to just go ahead and use your flowers and put them on a card similar to this. I just made a little card with a little belly band and um, whoops, I tacked it down because I used it for photography. So I just kind of made a little card and then I put this on top and so you could do something like that if you wanted to. Here's another one something you could do with your flowers. So you can do whatever you want to with your flowers. Um, but I really liked my piece of work that I did that I could hang on the wall. I'm always coloring and it's like you know I want something other than cards for once. And so that's why I'm working on this. Um, I'm using these new stamps by Stampandus. They're absolutely amazing. Um, and they came out with coordinating dots that go with them and so I wanted to share just for a couple seconds on that this one here is called lovely blossom this is what we're going to be using it comes with this flower and this beautiful face so we're going to be using that um, in addition to that you can purchase these dies that coordinate perfectly to go with them and Stampandus was extremely smart when they did this this time what they did the dies so that you could actually cut out the center portion and that could be your one layer and I have three of these oh here's my other one so you can actually get that out of one just go ahead and run it through your die machine and then you'd probably have to do it three different times but then you get these three different flowers out of just one stamp and so the stamp set does not come with these two those are included right here that you're just going to use your die or scissors and cut that out and so that makes it great for popping it up to be three-dimensional. I did not put that in my sample. However, I might go ahead and do that in one of my um, finished projects that I'll show you at the very end. So I just wanted to show you the dies and the stamps that we're going to be using. And those are available through Stampendous, available starting this month, April. Um, so let's go ahead and hop over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of speed through a lot of this, otherwise we're going to be here for several hours trying to get a whole flower finished. And I want you guys to spend some of your time coloring and not always watching me. I'm only going to use a portion of this flower, so it doesn't really matter that it has a boo-boo on it. Um, I'm not going to use it for anything except for just demo. So I'm going to go ahead and use my lightest color. What I've decided to use is an R24, an R29, and an R59. I also have a blender on hand and I also have an R21 on hand just in case I might need something for a little bit of um, blending things together or lightening it. I don't really want to lighten it with a blender pen but I might want to lighten it with a lighter color. So I'm going to show you how I got my first layer and then we're going to jump on over to here. So what I did is I took my first color and I wanted to get some dimension. I wanted to get some a fold in my petals. Can you see how it looks like there's a fold in my petal right here? It's kind of folded. There's shading down here because there's a layer and then I have a highlight right across here which that is where my highlight is going to be. On the same here, this is one that I've already jumped ahead and done a little bit. You can see that there's shading down along the edge and deep down in the dark valleys underneath that top petal and that's what we're going to work on. So in order to do that what you have to do is do an image study before you even get started and you have to determine where your hills and where your valleys are going to be. You can see on this one there's a deep valley right in here and that's where we have it dark because the valleys never get as much highlight or sunlight as the top of the hill. The top of the hill gets my highlight and the valley gets my dark. On the top petal there's it's a, almost the same but it's a little bit different because I don't want where these two pieces meet together I want the top petal to be lighter than the dark or the bottom petal and so I don't put as much dark on the edge here I only end this end with medium and not my darkest and so let's go ahead and take a peek on how we're going to do that so on my petal I'm going to have my highlight right through here where I have a smudge on my ink. And so I'm going to go ahead and flick towards my highlight. When you're flicking, remember it makes a difference how you hold your pen. If you hold your pen like this, you're going to have really fat strokes. There's nothing wrong with fat strokes, but I want these nice skinny 
thin ones like this on my image today. And so in order to do that, I have to hold my pen almost straight up. And now I can use just the very fine tip of my marker. And you can see that I can get that nice flicking motion. Some people like to pull like this. And some people like to push. It doesn't matter to me which way I do it. It depends what mood I'm in. And so make sure and turn your paper so that you can make it easier for yourself. If, you're, if you want to go this way, then you have your paper that way. When you do the other half of your flower, turn it back around. I hope that's making sense. So I'm going to go ahead and start flicking towards my highlight here. So all the way out to my highlight, where my highlight's going to be. Notice that I don't have any white spots in here. I made sure it was nice and thick with no white spaces in there, but I have lots of white spaces out here because I'm kind of flicking. I'm lifting my pen as I, as I do my stroke, lifting it. Okay, so there's my top part, and now I'm going to go ahead and put some color on the bottom part of my petal, and I'm going to work my way up. You can see how I'm going up and meeting with my other half of my petal. I'm kind of, um, I call it forking. I don't know what you would call it. It's kind of going like this with my petals, uh, or my um, strokes. So they're kind of going like this, but there's leaving some white space in between, kind of like this with my fingers. So I'm kind of trying to do this. I'm doing it very randomly, so I'm not precise. I'm just kind of flicking, and where the, my strokes go, they kind of go. If you go outside the lines like this, it's no big deal, because we're going to be cutting these flowers out. So it's no big deal whatsoever. We're going to go ahead and do this flower or this petal here, too, because I want to show you how to do a top layer, which is just a little bit different than the bottom layer. So we're going to pull it out. I'm going to put my ridge right in here. This again is my lightest color. I like to start with my lightest color to kind of make me a little plan on where I want my colors to go. There we go. So I kind of like that like that. That is my first layer, my R24 or whatever color combination you're using, it's your lightest color. So there we go. We have that. Let's put our cap back on that. Now I'm going to jump down to my medium color. So my medium color I'm only going to go two-thirds of the way of my first color. So I'm call calling this 100% of the way because it's all the way up to the highlight. And now I'm going to go two-thirds of the way up with my medium color. When I get to my darkest color, I'm not going to go more than a third of the way. An easy way to remember that is I'm using three colors, so I divide it into thirds. One-third, two-thirds, three-thirds. And then it's nice and evenly distributed. If I was using a fourth color, I would divide it into fourths. A fourth, a half, three quarters, and the whole thing. So um, that's how I divide mine out. Um, some people like rules to try to kind of remind them how to do things. And so I kind of give you that as a rule of thumb, but it's not gospel. So you don't have to follow it exactly, but at least it gives you an idea on the placement of your color. So I'm coming out here, I'm leaving some of the lighter color showing through, but I am adding my medium. And you'll see you'll start to get some depth and dimension here by adding in this medium color. Now I'm going to go down here, this is my back petal, so this is going to be a layer. I need some shading down underneath here. I went ahead and, and did a line like that because now when I come back up into here, I don't have to come all the way back into the black line. I only have to come up through my red um, outline. So I'm going to go ahead and come about two-thirds of the way down towards my highlight and go up about two-thirds of this. Two-thirds of this is not very much because there's only like a quarter inch of color here. So uh, a third of a quarter of an inch is very small. So your strokes are very tiny down here. Don't make them very big. I'm going to be a little bit heavy where it dips in like this. I'm going to make kind of like a little valley in here where there's a little bit of shading. There's a couple of those. So wherever it dips in, I'm going to kind of add like a little valley with some shading. And I think there's one right here. Little tiny one. And so here we go. Make sure and show some of that light color through. Don't cover it all up.
and there is my medium color. So you can see I have a lot of dimension here, um, a lot of depth, however it needs a little bit more shading because you really can't see where one of these petals ends and where one begins except for that black line. So we're going to go down to our deepest color or our darkest color, my R59. And now I'm going to add in some shading here to kind of pop that top layer up. My 59 might not be dark enough because I used quite a bit of that 29. If it's not dark enough, you can always add a bit of gray in here or you can go to an R89, which is a little bit darker. Here I used the same exact colors earlier and you can see how that R59 worked perfect. And this time it just might not give me enough depth. Okay, you don't want to put too much dark color down here on the top layer because then that'll make this the same color again. You want to make sure and have this bottom layer shaded a little bit so that it kind of pops that top petal and makes it look closer. I'm actually going to grab a gray marker, just one second. So here's a C5 marker. If you don't have enough definition right here to lift that top petal up to make it look closer to you than the bottom petal, you can take a medium gray and you can actually add that in. Sometimes it's good when I don't do something perfect because then I can show you how to fix things. So this is kind of a happy mistake. I liked it, but I just think it could look a little more wow. So basically I used four colors on here instead of my three because I added my C5 and I like it. I like that color that I added in there. I'm going to put it in these little deep valleys in here and these like little folds. Then I'm going to go back and soften it with my red because I don't want that gray to really show. So I'm going to cover it up with my R29. If you're doing a yellow combination, you probably don't want to use a gray for that. You would probably use a brown. Um, I don't know the technical reasoning, but brown seems to work because if I use a gray with yellows, it seems to make it turn greenish. And so I like to use brown. There, and I think we've gotten some depth there. So you can see the layering for sure there. Um, go ahead and give that a try, and then once you get those done, you'll go ahead and you'll jump to the center of your flowers. You can make this, these little guys whatever color you want. I like to make them nice and cheerful, so I'm gonna make mine yellow. And so I'm just gonna color mine in with yellow. That was a Y19. And then I'm actually going to come back with some Copic White. Um, it's opaque white. I'm, I'm going to use a little bit of this. You can use a white gel pen if you have it. Um, but I'm just going to take a little bit of this. And I'm going to put a couple little white dots on top of these. They now have one of these opaque whites by Copic that comes in a little jar, kind of like fingernail polish with a little tiny brush. And I just don't happen to have one because I have three jars of this. So I really can't justify buying something more. So you can just put some white dots on there as you please. If you really want to get technical, you could actually shade each of those little circles with some brown. Um, it's just how much depth and dimension that you want. So go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to do all three flowers. And so this week's assignment is to color your flowers and then you can either cut them out and um, or we, we can wait until the last week when we're going to assemble the card together. And so go ahead and practice. Um, if you don't have this stamp, you can purchase a, an image kit from me. Go ahead and go back into the classroom and you'll see kit information. You can pay it by PayPal. And so I tried to keep the price very reasonable. Um, it does take some time to stamp them and to put them in the mail um, and for postage, but um, I try to be a little bit reasonable on that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something and I can't wait to see your work. Please share in the, in the forum. You guys are really missing out if you don't post your um, pictures in the forum because you're not getting the feedback and opportunity to actually try again or to try to improve it. So try to get the most out of your class by using the forum. Thank you very much and I can't wait to meet you in the forum. Bye-bye.